uh, Honorable Chief Minister, for your comments and willingness to engage the United States and its uh, private sector. And I was very happy as a professor at the University to talk about education research and uh, agricultural research as well. So looking forward to continuing that conversation to set the scene. Uh, from a policy perspective, a month ago, the finance minister announced a budget and announcing the ambition of turning India into a $5 trillion economy. From the perspective of the state, if I may put you on the spot, given that we're off the record, what do you want from the central government to help you do the work in your state? What, what other reforms, uh, what is the implementation of those reforms that are still lacking from the center that would enable Andhra Pradesh under your leadership to achieve its goals? And the second one is that was very uh, interesting. I think a lot of folks around the room might be to hear your thoughts on how to make uh, Andhra and its residents more climate resilient. We've been hearing a lot of stories about water, drought, flooding, and of course the rising sea levels affects the state of the long coastline uniquely in many ways. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how to engage the private sector, in particular a lot of technology and resources around this table to help build that resilience agenda. Thank you. I think the uh, uh, central government's help uh, I think that is something what any state would require. Uh, this, all what I can say is uh, we share a good relationship with the central government and uh, with the neighboring states as well. In fact, uh, first time we have a situation where Telangana state government will be working together in a very strong way. Where interlinking of reverse is taking place with both the states coming on to one single platform. So that's something which was never done before, or never heard before. Something is happening now. So bilateral relations are very strong. And as far as the other part is concerned, uh, what uh, Professor asked, uh, we spoke about desalination plants, we spoke about interlinking of rivers. We spoke about electrical buses. All these are components where environment is looked at in a more positive way. So phasing out of 11,000 and all uh, diesel buses and bringing whole of them into electrical mode, 1,000 buses each, I think will be calling for a global tender. So it's a very strong, sustainable be what you want to be evolved because the current road, current road transport corporation of ours is already in existence. It's just doing it with the diesel bus, with the diesel bus. And uh, per kilometer, the cost per kilometer on diesel works out around about 15 to 16 rupees. Whereas if the same would be converted into electrical, it's just 1.1.2 1. 1. units kilowatt hours, 1.2 units. So probably it could be three rupees if wind energy also were to be brought into this. Uh, renewable energy were to also be brought into it. You can start out with three kilometers, uh, three to three rupees per kilometer, and it could slide down to even 50 paise per kilometer as well. And uh, to bring about profitability into this corporation, the entire uh, the workforce, that is the drivers and the clean and the drivers and the conductors, the workforce, we are absorbing them into the government so that this corporation could be clean. So this corporation may not be bothered about uh, the recurring expenditure what would uh, entail from uh, uh, the drivers and the conductors. Part of it. So by and large, this corporation now will become a very sustainable strong financial model, which will help any big investment to come in a very big way. So this is a positive step towards uh, cleaning up of uh, the environment. So by and large, we are, uh, we also want to bring about uh, environment friendly policies. We want to bring about, uh, uh, we want to change this pollution policy also fast a big way. I want to bring about certain professionals who have a lot of knowledge in this position, come and join us in a big way. So that you know, uh, 
moment I took over the reins, I just asked uh, someone in the government to uh, handle the uh, uh, pharma part of it. As to what the numbers officially were and what the numbers unofficially were. The toxic waste uh, officially recorded is 30,000 tons. The unofficial records speak about one lakh tons. So the balance of 70,000 tons is either going into the sea or it's being burned into the air. So I just want to, so, so we decided that you know, we need to bring in certain professionals into this who, are, who, who have a lot of knowledge as to what they're talking about, especially in pollution. So we want to take care, we want, we want to handle the entire uh, Procurement of waste so that it could be handled properly. These are the few things what you know we will be doing going now and now. So I think by and large we want to promote uh, Thank you very much. Uh, picking up now on a thing that uh, uh, Dr. Ramesh brought up was the ease of doing business, which you can imagine this is a business association that's that's paramount for uh, for our members. Uh, so it's great to see that that, that is something that's high on your priority list. The one thing that I would just comment that it's great to have a single point of contact. We do that here in the U.S. with states have a single point of contact. The key is that single point of contact is empowered to be able to drive the process. So it's that you know if you have a single point of contact, it still takes a year because that that individual is not able to drive the process quicker. So we would just uh, emphasize the empowering of that single point of contact to drive the process through as opposed to just managing it uh, across the different agencies. So but, uh, we're very encouraged to see that, and especially with how you open today up, uh, you kind of get the underpinning for doing business in a, uh, in a region with honesty, trust, and political stability, which are paramount and key for, uh, for the businesses to thrive. One question, is, uh, AP has been known for certain sectors. We've talked a lot about agriculture and healthcare. What are the new sectors? the emerging sectors that you would like to encourage the business community, whether it be space, whether it be something in technology, what is it something that you would like to encourage American businesses to look at to accompany uh, people with in order to grow and build and invest? Mm -hmm. Robert, as you said, I think uh, the reason is, uh, as you said, single point application, we just not want to just monitor that, we don't want to drive it. That's exactly the reason why we said it will be governed by the Chief Minister himself. I will be the chairman of that uh, committee. And uh, so that, that I think would set uh, everything what the state is going to give. I think that would be done on a monitor basis. And as far as everything what central government would have to be giving in, that we would pursue. And uh, I think, uh, the government is also very proactive and hopefully things will go off very smoothly. But uh, not many of them require state central government's permission to that So permissions by and large would be very speedy and uh, land and power and water, these are the things what would also be very, very uh, we will provide them. So I think we have absolutely no problems with that. And, uh, coming to uh, Emerging sectors, where uh, I just listed out quite a few of them. Something like that. Um, we have strong sea coast, what could be used, whichever way we want. Anything you want to export, get there. Uh, desalination plant, I just put uh, Metros, we just put water. And BOT models, all these things can be taken out. Ports, we just put water. And then uh, internal waterways, we have a uh, uh, Buckingham Canal that would be revived, which would straight away connect the entire coast from north to China, including the uh, uh, coast all the way to China. So uh, the ferrying cost is of course much, much, much cheaper than uh, taking, a, uh, taking anything like the road and taking anything through the rail. Ferrying cost is much cheaper. So that would be Normally, the project could uh, uh, set a change. And I just put electrical buses, and I said corporation, the bus corporation is very strong after removal of uh, 
his employees from that part and uh, diesel versus electricity, I just spoke about. And that depends on research, uh, bringing in from universities, food processing, uh, improving the quality of our aqua and agricultural products. You know, something like what people like, any, anything what can, what I, where, where agriculture could be harnessed properly. We are, we are the place. Okay, we'll open it up now for a, uh, a few questions from the uh, from our members. I believe we'll start off with Jacobs and Amir F. Takari, who uh, heads up international development for Jacobs. Thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, I very much enjoyed the presentation uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm with uh, Jacobs. Uh, we are uh, one of the world's largest uh, engineering firms and professional services firms. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of work uh, in India, particularly with the Capital City Project, where Jacobs was the program manager. My question uh, to you today is, uh, what's, what's your vision for the Capital City Project? Do you still see smart cities as an integral part of uh, the development and future of, of AP going forward? Thank you. So basically, smart cities are something that they are the future. So ultimately, all the, all the important cities would have to be turned on the spot. So that would be a priority. Vizac is one such place where it's high on the ground. It's one of the, in AP, it could be termed as one of the most cosmopolitan places. So there would be a lot of focus on that. And uh, one thing you have on that, we have always welcome and support you. Uh, Nelson Cunningham, uh, President of Aquarian Associates. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for making this one of the first stops on your visit. I have been a, was a longtime board member of the U.S. India Business Council, and I'm currently a board member of the Atlantic Council, so I think you could not have picked two finer institutions <laughs> to host you today for lunch. Uh, my question relates to one of the issues that came up over and over and over again in the presentation which is providing your people with health care at a reasonable cost. Uh, one of the issues that we have seen over the years that is one of the most difficult in assuring affordable health care is the cost of pharmaceuticals. And I wonder what your strategy is for dealing with uh, the cost of pharmaceuticals uh, to provide broad access to your, pay to your people. Andhra Pradesh has got a strong coastline, as I just spoke about. There are a lot of pharma companies already, already prevalent in Andhra in, in AP, because of its strong presence. What we are wanting to do is, uh, the FDA norms, the World Health Organization norms, the WHO norms, these are the things what the procurement to state government entities was not a factor. But uh, now, after we have come into power, uh, in fact, just uh, coincidentally, just a couple of days we had a review meeting with uh, uh, the health department. And in that department, uh, just a couple of days ago, we decided that, you know, henceforth procurement norms should be at least WHO. So this is something what uh, we have also taken, uh, taken into consideration. Because under the quality of the medicine given, until as it is improved, and where you know, uh, 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 until as it is improved, it doesn't yield good results. That's one of the very, very important points we also understand, and we're doing it in a big way. You know, in this process of doing whatever we have in mind, I think it's going to be one of the most talked about, road, talked about model what we contemplate. If this goes well, this entire country will actually look up to us. We're wanting to ensure that you know any thing what is above 1,000 rupees is covered. So for that, you know, we've, we're making sure that the number of diseases what come under the insurance policy, that they're increased. Uh, the national policy speaks for around 900 or odd diseases. We wanted to take it up to 2,000. And then uh, we wanted to improve the quality of our uh, domestic uh, internal hospitals. So every hospital, we want to revamp them in a very big way. So that every hospital is to the standards. 
the rest of the Indian standards that we have. We want to upgrade every hospital to that level. So we wanted to bring about all these changes. So hopefully in the next uh, uh, three years, uh, with, uh, thankfully with God's grace, hopefully we would uh, like to see some changes for about. Right, so, okay, being uh, cognizant of time, uh, Chief Minister, what we'd like to do, we've got three quick questions. I will call, uh, I've got three uh, parts up. Uh, if you'll name, company, quick uh, question, we'll get them all three together, let you react to them, and then we'll make sure we're on time. Okay, that sound good? skills development, especially in light of um, your 75% reservations of in-state employees and how we can help upskill the workforce, especially as India is now trying to attract manufacturing jobs in IT and tech. So is that going to be government-led or are you going to be working with the private sector? Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve Jacobs, Phil Morris, International. Um, not so much a question as an offer. We used to be a major purchaser of, um, of leaf in Andhra Pradesh, and I was listening to your comments about agrarian reform, and we would very much like to come in and talk to you about our ideas and how we can reform the production and marketing system that would bring greater farmer income and value to, through good agricultural practices to the farmers in the um, open that we'd like to talk to you about. Great. Thanks very much, Steve. So we've got one on finance and uh, worker development. Uh, in 
industries. I think that would be an important part. So anything, anybody who's, who's of that credibility, who holds that kind of certification, that kind of credibility and would help, give confidence to the people who are coming here and setting, wanting to set up their base here, then to be welcome for us, to be welcome to this. Hi guys, I'm Naveen Polishetti and please subscribe to Mirror TV. Hi, this is Sandeep Kishan. Please subscribe to Mirror TV. Hi, this is Arya. Please subscribe to Mirror TV. Hi everybody, this is Tarun. Please subscribe to Mirror TV.